Hello, everyone. Merry Christmas 2020, and I wish you a happy new year 2021. Today, I'd like us to go and derive some properties of the general normal distribution or Gaussian curve today, simply by um, um, looking at algebraic and differential calculus properties. So given this equation over here, where mu is the population mean and sigma is the standard deviation or measurement of the spread of data, we want to prove that the Gaussian curve is symmetric about the vertical line x equals mu, but the Gaussian curve, or in this most general case, will have a critical point at x equals mu equals one over sigma times square root of two pi. And we want to prove rigorously that this critical value is a maximum value. And finally, we want to show that the Gaussian curve will have an inflection points, two inflection points at x equals the uh, points corresponding to the mean plus or minus the standard deviation. So in order to prove that the Noor distribution curve is symmetric about the mean, we need to show that it fits the definition of an even function, which is given by this following statement over here. For a function to be even means that if we were to put in a negative input or a positive input, that they will give us the exact same outputs. Nothing changes with the sign. So it will be symmetric across mu. This is easy. We could ignore the constant term being multiplied over here and the exponential parts. Since the only thing that is being changed is the variable part in the quadratic term, we just have to care about that. So we were to plug in a positive x and a negative x, you should end up getting the exact two identical terms here at the bottom. You therefore conclude that the function is even and therefore symmetric. Now, in order to solve for the local maximum and to show it as a local maximum, we simply have to find the first derivative of this function and then set it equal to zero. Now, two things you need to recall, you need to recall the chain rule, which is the differentiation rule for composite functions and the derivative of a natural exponential function. The derivative of a natural exponential function is simply itself. Now, the constant will remain the same, this guy over here. Um, by the chain rule, this constant will be factored out or, or will be distributed out. And you will also get by the chain rule a linear expression since this x minus mu squared is a quadratic term. When we apply the power rule, we get a polynomial of one less degree, which is obviously a linear term. And then we'll get an exact copy of the exponential term out. So now to solve this is for equal to zero, we can ignore the constant terms, those will cancel out. And an exponential term can never be negative, as we know through this graph over here. So all you have to care about is the linear term. So solving this, we truly get that x equals the mean. And now we are justified to plug in x equals mean to find the critical point. This will give us this one over sigma times square root of two pi times e raised to zero power. Any number raised to zero power is one. So indeed, we do get this value as our local maximum or critical point. Now to show that it is a local maximum, we have to show that the second derivative at that point, the second derivative function at that point, x equals mu is negative. So this will be a bit of a more trickier task because our first derivative function is in the form a times x minus b e to the x, where a and b are real numbers. So we really have a linear expression being multiplied by an exponential expression. In order to differentiate this, we need to use the product rule, which is this nasty guy over here. So being very careful with our rules, we can go and differentiate these guys out over here, do some nice factoring, and we end up with the original exponential term multiplied by these two terms over here negative one over sigma cubed times square root of two pi and x minus mu squared divided by sigma fifth times square root of two pi. Luckily enough at mu, this term becomes zero. And indeed this term over here is always negative. So we get that indeed that this second derivative function at mu will always be negative. So we indeed concluded that um, our critical point is a local maximum. Now, finally, to find the inflection points and to show that is the mean plus or minus the standard deviation. 
Well, we found the second derivative, ugly, ugly thing that it is already. Um, we can ignore the exponential term that can never be zero. So we said we have to simplify this. All these steps over here. We get sigma squared equals x minus mu quantity squared. And when we take the square root, we have to be careful that we both preserve the positive and negative roots. And so solve it, you get x equals mu plus or minus sigma, respectively. And we are done. That's the algebraic and differential calculus properties of the Gaussian distribution proven. It should be noted that with um, proving that as a local maximum case, implicitly I had to go and use or, or to more rigorously justify the proof, you have to implicitly refer to the extreme value theorem and the intermediate value theorem. The extreme value theorem says that assuming your function is continuous, that it must have either a highest or lowest point. An intermediate value theorem says that if your function has a zero, um, then there must be that it must be positive and negative. So it has a continuous function and is not the trivial function f of x equals zero. So those would have been used to make this argument more rigorous. But that's it. We are essentially done. So I uh, hope you enjoy. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know anything that can be done. Until then, wish you a happy new year.